not visible to her. Now can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, sir. But video. Video? There's no video option. Where I just see. It's not. The camera is not working. There's no video option only over here. Where? There's speaker audio setting. There's no video option. No, I'm telling you, she can't see my video.
host has stopped you from turning on the okay run Madam, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, I can able to hear you. So just a minute, we'll start in a couple of minutes.
start yeah yeah no one okay Clicked it now, then motor given on setting. Hello, I have clicked on your okay. Okay, yeah, make host. Yes. Now can I start? Hello? Hello? Good afternoon Hello. everybody. Hello? Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir, shall we start, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh. On behalf of School of Commerce Studies, Jane deemed to be university, knowledge shall be. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah you are audible. You are audible. You're audible. You're audible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sure. On behalf of School of Commerce Studies, Jane deemed to be university, Knowledge Campus Bangalore, I welcome you all for this national level webinar on diverse thinking in new normal. Your active participation is important throughout the session. Participants are requested to mute their audio and video. If you have any queries, kindly type in chat box it will be addressed at the end of the session. It's my privilege to tell you about our center head, Dr. B.A. Vasu sir. He has done his post-graduation in MSA in statistics from Bangalore University with a specialization in operations research and industrial statistics. And he has a doctorate in management. His specialization and teaching experience are predominantly in business mathematics, mathematics, statistics, research methodology, and marketing research. His rich experience in industry and higher education spans over 23 years, encompassing teaching, administration, student and lecturers counseling, survey, and statistical analysis for educational institutions. With ability to capitalize on new opportunities plan innovative strategies and resourceful in tackling and solving problems. He has been the architect in organizing over 25 and national and international seminars, conferences, FDPs and MDP. He's currently working as the director of the School of Commerce Studies at Jain Knowledge Campus, Jainahar. His roles and responsibilities amongst others include 
member in board of studies for commerce in jain university member academic council jain university chief custodian of jain university examinations ug programs he has contributed towards the digital lecture series and has authored textbooks for jain university and bangalore university apart from serving as a resource person in other colleges i call upon you sir to deliver the inaugural address good afternoon everybody good afternoon hello राजदीप नॉट जस्ट एन इंस्पिशन बट ए लिविंग लेजेंड एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सनैलिटी in jain university right from the inception in 1991 in jain university rajdeep joined in 95 and has been constantly supporting the growth of department of commerce from shri bhagwan mahavir jain college to jain university rajdeep has been pioneer in supporting the cause of uh, commerce education not only that he has been a well known uh, speaker uh, and a very gr- great toast master uh, internationally awarded and we are all privileged to listen to him personally my very close friend and i always uh, like to listen to him because every day something new is in store and the topic what we have chosen for the webinar is extremely good i would like to thank the entire organizing team to get rajdeep on board and make everybody uh, get an opportunity to listen to rajdeep at this difficult times his talk will be an inspiration to most of us and uh, not most of us everyone here will be part of this uh, webinar i can tell you that there is a lot of take home for every single person who has uh, been part of this webinar every time rajdeep will bring something new and i can definitely tell you the learning what you get from this webinar will be multifold i think i should not stay for a long time between you and rajdeep because those moments what you listen will be worthwhile than me because rajdeep makes a difference and is one of the most sort of the corporate trainer and a very well known quiz master for you thank you thanks thank a you. lot for your great address sir thank you ma'am now it's a time thank for you. us now it's a time for us to know about our eminent personality dr rajdeep manwani sir dr rajdeep manwani sir is the coordinator department of commerce school of commerce studies jain university he is an academician trainer motivational speaker life coach counselor and quiz master par excellence both by training and by choice He is working as the coordinator in the Department of Commerce at Jain University, and is a triple postgraduate and a PhD, having completed his MCom, MBA, and MPhil, and also a doctorate in commerce on the topic strategic evaluation of training in commercial banks. He has secured the gold medal for topping both the MCom and MPhil examinations in Mysore University. an eloquent speaker he has won several debates and was adjured the best speaker in the international tape speech competition held by toastmasters international in 2008 he holds the record of being adjured the best impromptu speaker for 5 years in india and sri lanka for the years 2008 2009 2010 
and 2010, 2012, and 2015. He has been awarded the Distinguished Toastmaster and the highest award in Toastmasters International. He is the recipient of the National Award as role model for empowerment of persons with disability from the Honorable President of India in December 2013. He is also the recipient of the special award given by the Chief Minister of Karnataka in 2011 and the state award for excellence given by the government of Karnataka in 2015. He also received the Rotary Award for Vocational Service in Education, the Extraordinary Pathfinder Award by Rotary International and the Positive Health Hero Award given by Dr. Badras Clinic and Bajaj Auto in October 2012. He has been a featured TEDx speaker and has hosted several training programs, given motivational speeches and held management talk shows on radio. He is a regular speaker to the senior management and leadership of several companies like Bosch, Vibro, HP and Cyber and is a part of the elite panel of speakers for several leadership and management programs. He has also done workshops on humor and wit in several colleges and companies. He is an avid quizzer and was the quiz master in several inter-school and intercollegiate competitions. He is passionate about research and quality in education and is a part of the internal quality assurance cell and also a key member of the research cell at Jane University and has completed two minor research projects on entrepreneurship and student behavior. He has published several research articles and made several paper presentations on education and management in national and international seminars. He has trained, motivated and mentored over 19,500 students and executives over a span of 20 years and received excellent ratings from his corporate and educational claims, which include Britannia, SBI, Pantaloon Retail, Vibro, and Kotak Life. He firmly believes in the motto of his life, touching lives, making a difference. Now, without other, further ado, <coughs> we will turn the time over to Dr. Rajdeep Manwani, sir, to present on diverse thinking in new normal. Thank you Over so much. Time. Thank you so much, Sharmila ma'am. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay. Thank you so much for those kind words. Thank you so much, Vasu, sir, for those very, very kind words. I am reminded of a movie which uh, had released a long time back. It was called The Tramp, and it was by Charlie Chaplin. I can't see the movie because I have a visual problem, but there are something called as audio described movies. So they describe what is happening. So what was in that movie, if you would have seen the Charlie Chaplin movie was, this Charlie Chaplin is a beggar, he's a tramp. And one day he doesn't get any food to eat. So the next day he decides that, let me get up a little early and go and beg. So he takes his he takes his bowl, he takes his carpet, he rolls it under his shoulder and he goes at around 5, 5.30 in the morning to that particular place. He puts his carpet, puts his bowl and he sits down there. As he sits down, there is a milkman who's going past that place and that milkman salutes him. So he's wondering, why is this milkman saluting me? He's a little uh, perplexed, he's a little nonplussed. He's wondering why this is happening. After that, the newspaper person goes, and he and he salutes Charlie Chaplin. And he's wondering, why are they saluting me? Again, another two or three people who are going for a jog, they come and they salute Charlie Chaplin. And this continues. And he's wondering, might we have done something? All these days I've worked so hard. You know, his ego starts growing. And everybody from the time he sat from 5.30 kept on saluting him. After around 8.39, he said, this cannot happen. Why is it that everybody is saluting me? There might be something wrong with this. So there was an army general who was going there and he also saluted. He, he went up to the army general and he said, sir, why are you saluting me? That army general looked at him and said, who are you? Who's saluting you? Look where you're sitting. Then Charlie Chaplin turns around and he sees there's a 
statue of Abraham Lincoln. Everybody was saluting the statue of Abraham Lincoln. I am like that lucky beggar who has been sitting in front of giants and people who have helped me, my gurus, my friends like Vasu, the Jain University. So the salute should never go to me. It should go to those people who are behind me. And all those people who have helped me over this period of time to make me what I am today. So thank you so much, Jain University. Thank you so much, Vasu, sir. Thank you so much, all those people, all those teachers whom I've learned. And me doing this seminar is also a little selfish because whenever I'm asked to do a webinar or a seminar, I've been doing a few of them. It's, it's always a learning experience for me also. So when they suggested the topic, I thought, okay, good. It will be a nice learning opportunity for me also. So I'm just an ordinary beggar in the field of education and I'm learning a little bit every day. So my coming here is also with a little selfish motive that I learn something from y'all and I also got to learn on this topic quite a bit. So thank you very, very much for that wonderful introduction. When I was young and I could see this was before I lost my eyesight in my age standard, I'd gone to this magic show, which was hosted by a person called PC Sarkar. You know, and he had come to this Bangalore and there's a place called Town Hall and he had come over there. And you know, what he did is he, asked, he got some flowers. So he asked a few children, I was in sixth or seventh standard at that time and I don't remember exactly, but he told all of you all tear these petals of this flower and put it in this hat. So he had got one big, long black hat. We all put it over there. Three or four children volunteered. We went and he put it. Then he did something with that hat. He put it here and there. And suddenly one bird flew out from that hat. You might have seen this a common trick in magic where they put petals or flowers inside the hat and suddenly a bird flies out. And we were a little confused. We said everybody in the hall started clapping and all that. So he told, you all don't believe me, right? So we said, no, we can't believe you. What is this? So he told, okay, try it again. So again, I went. And he told me, okay, put the flowers, put your hand inside the cap. And I put my hand inside the cap and there was nothing. There was only flowers. I could feel only petals. And at that time I could see, so I felt only the petals. But again, he did the same trick after he had come back from behind the stage. And again, the bird flew out. Now, this was very, very magical. And till now, whenever you go to a magic show, the most favorite act of a magician is you put flowers or you put a rabbit and a bird will fly out or something will fly out. Later on, when I became a little more clever, I googled out. And in fact, I not only googled out, I have a friend who is a magician, Savin Aikte. I asked him, how do they do this? So he told me, Rajiv, come, I'll show you how do we do this? How do we make flowers into birds? So he made me put my hand inside the hat. And I felt it. There were only flowers. There was only anything. Then he told me, see the edges of that hat. I saw the edges and I felt some small thing there. You know what he did? It was a small zip. He opened that zip and inside he could keep whatever he want. That means that hat had a false base. There was something under that base also, which could store that bird. Now we know the trick, but our minds are just like that. We always keep an artificial base for our brains. But if we go deeper into our brain, if we go deeper into our thinking, you can make magic happen. You can make the diverse thinking happen. So I always remember this and I wonder, sometimes your hat, your head will have a false base. You have a limitation on your head and you say, I can think only this much. I cannot come out with a new creative idea. I cannot come out with this new thinking. But there will be something under that. That's where the bird is kept. The zip is holding you back. So what is that way in which we can think better? What is that way in which we can think in a diverse manner, where we can improve the way in which we think? So we are going to discuss this. And let me tell you the progress, or in fact, let me tell you the history of mankind. The known history of mankind is only around 7,000, 8,000 years. Correct, the known written history of mankind. I'm not talking about the world. The world is millions of years. But written history of mankind is only around 7,000, 8,000 years. And the history of mankind is the history of only a few men, a few personalities. Out of these 8,000 years, 
we will remember only william shakespeare we will remember mahatma gandhi we will remember albert einstein we will remember only these people so the history of 8000 years of mankind is the history of a few men a few hundred thousand people who have made a difference on this planet whether it's rama whether it's lord krishna whether it's prophet mohammed whether it's jesus christ all these people the history of mankind is only the history of a few hundred thousand people and the history of those few hundred thousand men is the history of the way they have thought in critical moments only the way in which they thought jesus christ thought at a particular moment that love is the answer and that's why he became immortal people thought albert einstein thought that science has to be viewed in a different way and he made a difference to the world so the way in which these people have thought in critical moments what was mahatma gandhi when he was in south africa nothing a very very ordinary lawyer barrister he couldn't even speak properly he used to shake shake and shiver when he spoke in front of the uh, judges over there but then one day when he was traveling in a train and he was traveling in a first class compartment we all know the story what happened there was a british guard who asked him that as a brown person you cannot travel in a white man's privileged first class compartment and what did he do he threw mahatma gandhi on that station with his bag and baggage the station is till now it's a very obscure station it's remembered till day only because mahatma gandhi was stored, thrown on that station it's called peter mansburg but when mahatma gandhi was sitting over there on that station feeling humiliated feeling insulted there was one thought which crossed his mind and that thought changed the history of india the thought was if these britishers are treating me like this in a foreign country how will they be treating my own brothers and sisters in my own country and what did he do when he was thrown on the platform he was mohandas karamchand gandhi when he walked out of the platform a thought has taken place in his mind and he became mahatma gandhi what was mother teresa an ordinary school teacher absolutely ordinary her name was sister agnes she was working in the loreto school in kolkata and when people used to ask her sister agnes will you become the headmistress will you become the principal of this particular school she used to say never how will i become the principal i am not so capable enough but one day when she was walking down the streets of kolkata she saw a man dying in the gutters of kolkata and when she saw that man dying he was covered with filth he was she was he was covered with dirt he was being eaten by house flies and she said my god how can a person be left here for dying and what did she do she immediately picked him up took him in the cycle rickshaw took him to the school and in the school there was this medical room where there was this nurse and her friend she told let's try and save this man's life they started washing him they started putting medicines on his wounds but as they were doing that mother teresa sister agnes at that particular point of time realized that there is no point i don't think so i'll be able to save this man so with a lot of anguish she turned towards a friend who was a nurse and she said it didn't make a difference did it it didn't make a difference did it simply meaning that it didn't make any difference because anyway this man is going to die but before her friend could speak she heard this man whispering something and she went close to him and in bengali i'm translating it in english that man whispered sister it made a big difference first i was dying as a nobody in the ditches of kolkata now i'm dying as somebody in the hands of an angel and he closed his eyes and he passed away mother teresa had nothing to do she cried she sent the body to the police station the cremation in the night but that night she couldn't sleep and the next morning there was a thought she started thinking differently and the very resignation letter she took the resignation letter to the principal of the school and she said sister i am resigning from my job for today the principal 
sister said sister agnes why are you resigning she said you know there are thousands of organizations which give dignity to people who live but there is not one organizations which gives dignity to people who die i will start one such organization that was a thought that thought which took place changed the way in which missionaries changed the way in which non government organizations function that principal asked her do you have the money sister agnes she said no she said do you have the human resources she said no she said do you have the actual uh, people who are going to help you the technical resources do you have any place where you're going to start it she said no then how are you going to start it sister agnes she said i have faith and love she walked out of that with 20 she walked out of say loreto school with 23 rupees today missionaries of charity is spread over 140 countries in india it's called nirmal hriday it feeds over 4 lakh people every day all because there was one thought which changed the way in which she thought so what i'm trying to tell you is the history of mankind is the history of men and the history of men is the history of the thoughts which they have encountered over a period of time so we have to learn to think a little differently so now how we learn to think differently to learn to think differently i am going to use a model which is very popular which is called the six thinking hats the six thinking hats was a model which was developed by one of the most amazing lateral thinkers of our time his name is edward de bono and this was developed around 20 years back not 20 i'm so sorry around 35 years back around 1985 19 yeah around that time and within the first i think so it's now it i don't know how many edition it might be in its 50th or 60th edition and every time it comes out it gets sold out it's one of the most potent tools for diverse thinking it gives you an overview of how you can think in so many different manners so let's talk about these different six thinking hats so that we can improve our diverse thinking now i must make a statutory warning all of these six thinking hats are not mutually exclusive what do you mean by they are not mutually exclusive it simply means that it's not that if you use one hat you cannot use the other hat in fact you have to use all these hats in cognizance with each other you have to use it together with each other when you use these hats together when you combine these that's when you actually get the best results of diverse thinking that's when you can start thinking in a much better manner so what we're going to do is we'll look at these different six thinking hats and what they symbolize and how you can think in a different manner i'm going to pause over here and ask sharmila ma'am if she can hear me you can hear me clearly ma'am Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In between, there is no uh, dist. Yeah, in between, uh, like uh, some network issues are there. Oh, but then how much of the whenever there's a network issue, it's you please. On. It's going on. No issues, sir. You can go. If on. any network issue comes, you please stop me, ma'am, because you are in a webinar mode, so nobody can uh, actually unmute themselves, nor they can tell me whether I'm. So if I miss out on anything, you please uh, let me know. Is yes, that sir. okay? Sure. If I'm sure. if I'm gargling somewhere, because there is. Uh, sometimes a little uh, so stop me immediately because otherwise we'll miss out got it or no yes, so any sir. any point which you missed out while i was speaking nothing right or no sir go ahead please ah uh -huh. yeah okay now coming to the point now let's go through these six thinking hats very very briefly the first hat is called the white hat okay now what is this white hat all about now what is white white is paper and what you do on paper you write down things you write down facts so the white hat is basically the thinking hat which decides about the facts and the facts which you have to find out in order to arrive at decisions so it is the fact finding hat correct or no so whenever you start thinking do i get the relevant facts and if i get the facts right and if i get the necessary research done on that particular and if i think in a fact driven way what is the facts behind this if i get the facts right sometimes my thinking can improve so that hat which is based on the facts is called as the white hat what is it called the white hat now let me tell you an incident 
In fact, I had uh, mentioned this story sometime back when I had done a research webinar, but anyway, I'll do this again. See, in the 1980, in, in fact, in, exactly in 1980, there is a luxury brand of a car called Rolls Royce. All of you all have heard of it, right? Now, Rolls Royce was facing a slump in their sales. They were finding that not many people were buying their cars. So they hired a marketing research and an advertising agency called O&M, Ogilvy and Manther, to do a research and to find out what can they do in order to improve their sales? What sort of advertising campaign can they run in order to improve their sales? So O&M and Rolls-Royce did a bit of research and they started finding out that people are bored of the same luxury cars. The same seat is comfortable, same steering is good, same colors are nice, correct or no? Same, this is a status symbol. So O&M said, the research points that every customer looks for a value. What is the value which I'm getting if I'm spending so much on a luxury car? What is the value? What is the sustainable value proposition? It's not the unique selling point or the unique selling proposition, not the USP. What is the SVP? What is the sustainable value which we can offer for this particular car? And if we can think from the facts that we've received, I'll tell you what was the value which they offered because of the research. They found out the facts and they offered a value. Now, what was that value? I'll tell you in a minute. O&M in 1981 hired the middle pages of most US and European newspapers. You know, the middle pages and it's the biggest page, right? In the front page, you can see only half the newspaper. In the middle page, you can see the whole newspaper, right? And if you see in a normal advertisement, and they did research on this one. So what, what is the normal? Are people going to buy cars because they see a beautiful model inside the car? Are they going to buy a car because they see a fantastic exterior of the car? And that is boring because everybody puts the same advertisement. Their research pointed that customers and consumers were looking for something different and they did something radically different. They had a black background in the middle pages of most newspapers across USA and Europe and what they did is on the black background they had two silver lines. One line written on the top of the page, one line written at the end of the page. On top of the page the line that was written was even at 160 kilometers per hour, you can only hear the tick of the clock. And the last line on the page was, it is high time we did something about the clock. And it was signed Rolls Royce. And this ad created a stir. The sales picked up by nearly 50% in the next two months. Even at 160 kilometers per hour, you can only hear the tick of the clock. What was the value they had researched? They had found out by their research that people are looking for a noiseless car. And they had found out that if we can emphasize this, the value, even at 160 kilometers per hour, you're traveling, the car is so smooth, so smooth, that even at 160 kilometers per hour, you can only hear the tick of the clock. And what was the last line? It's high time we did something about the clock. And this is nothing but research-based advertising. After two months, they changed the ad on more research. They hired the same newspapers across USA and UK and all over Europe. And what did they do? They had the same black background. They had the same one silver line at the top and one silver line at the bottom. The silver line on top read, now even at 160 kilometers per hour, you need not hear the tick of the clock. And the last line read, we have changed the analog clock to a digital clock. And it was signed Rolls Royce. Now, sales of Rolls Royce picked up. The car did extremely well, but this was white hat thinking. They had done sustainable research over a period of time. Akshay Patra Foundation here in Bangalore did a lot of white hat thinking while they were giving midday meals to the children. 
and they consulted Google Maps, they conducted research and they found out routes and they found out that if the trucks which are carrying food follow a certain route, they can save up to 3 lakh rupees of petrol every month, which can be used to feed another 300, 400 students. White hat thinking, research, getting through Google Maps, finding out the research, finding out the way in which the Bill Gates and Melinda Gates Foundation is one of the most prestigious foundations in the in the world, you know, and they did some phenomenal work to eradicate tropical diseases in Africa, malaria, filaria, etc. And they spent millions of dollars doing what? Doing this very thing. What they used to do? They used to go, they used to spend money on malarial drugs, quinine and all those HCQ, which has now become used also for your COVID. And they found that the rate at which malaria and filaria fell was only 5 to 10 percent. Then they said there's something wrong. And they did research over the next 10 years to find out that even though we are giving these malarial drugs, filarial drugs, nothing as much has happened because the Africans eat less, their immunity less, especially the sub Saharan African countries. Hello, sir. So now what Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have done over the last 20 years from 2000 is they have shifted from this. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Sarmila, yeah. Yeah, sir. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Did my voice break? Yes, yeah, sir. In between. And now it is fine, sir. Please go ahead. No, when as soon as it breaks, you call me. So what did you hear last, ma'am? Did you hear no, it sir, audio is okay. Audio is okay. It is for you. Mm, yeah, okay. Only video the video. Struck, yes. Okay. They don't have to see me, correct? Okay. <laughs> okay. Now coming to the point. So, so what happens was they have shifted their entire, they have shifted their entire focus now, not on preventing diseases, but on increasing agricultural production to remove malnutrition. 10 years of research and in the last 20 years, all tropical diseases have halved 50%. Just research which was done to find out that it's not prevention of diseases, but it's of creating immunity and giving them good food. So if you see all Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, millions of dollars are now spent on agriculture, creating, removing malnutrition so that people don't fall sick. So just remember that sometimes Hello, sir. That very, very important data. Tell me something, ma'am. Yes, sir. It got Samina, got can stuck. you hear me? Yes, sir. In between, it stuck? is getting struck, sir. You are what, the voice, about... audio or the V? The audio, audio or the V? Audio also, audio also. It is getting oh. struck in between. Okay, now is it okay? Is it okay or yes. no? Or should... Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Okay, now Narayan Murthy, the founder of Infosys, used to tell this very clearly. He used to tell, we trust in God, but believe in data. We trust in God, but believe in data. So just remember the first hat is the white hat thinking. Let me go to the second hat. Correct or no? The second hat, which I want to like to talk about is called the red hat. Now, what is this red hat? Red hat symbolizes the heart. It symbolizes gut feeling. It symbolizes intuitive thinking. So when you symbolize thinking from the heart rather from your head, rather than carrying, finding out data, why don't we have these intuitive feelings? Sometimes though, don't you get that intuitive feeling? Something's not going to go right. Something may go right. That feeling, that cool voice inside you, which tells you that you have to act in a particular way was called as red hat thinking, what it was called as red hat thinking, isn't it? In fact, I have a friend who's an anthropologist. An anthropologist is a person who does research on different cultures and races. And uh, this man went to Andaman and Nicobar Islands and somehow got into the tribals over there. 
and when he was asking them questions one question which he asked them is how many senses do you have and everybody will answer five senses right seeing listening smelling tasting correct but not the five senses not the seeing from the eyes not the hearing from the ears not the smelling from the nose not the tasting with the taste buds not the touching with the skin they always told him we have seven senses how many senses seven senses and he was a little confused he told what are the seven senses they told no we have seven senses we don't have five senses and when they asked when he probed further he found out that five senses are normal all of you all know the five senses seeing touching feeling i mean smelling tasting hearing but besides that they said there is one more sense called the sense of balance so when we go to shoot our prey in the forest when we are shooting a deer or we are shooting a rabbit we have to have a sense of balance because if we don't balance ourselves properly the arrow will go and hit somebody else we have to have a very good sense of balance we take a sense of balance for granted ask a person who is drunk they can't stand they don't have a sense of balance and the seventh sense they told was the sense of intuition and it's a very very clearly present sense in all of us but because we over utilize the other five senses this sense gets hidden they said that you know in the morning when we get up we get a strange feeling that we have to go to the right side of the forest there we'll find prey if we don't obey that seventh sense and we go to the left side of the forest be sure that day we don't get any prey we can't we have to go hungry that day so that intuition i have a friend called anandi she's got an amazing intuitive thinking brain one day she got up and she said oh my god i have to get all the electricity wires changed in my house so she called this person the electrician the electrician told mama what happened she told change the electricity wires she told he told mama i'll just switch on everything and see he switched on the ac he switched on the fans he switched on the geyser and everything was working properly he told mama why did you call me take give me 100 rupees there's nothing wrong with your electrical settings as he was going out she said no i just have a feeling inside me something is telling me i have to change this electrical setting wires that man told if you are so bent upon wasting money no problem he went and he opened the wires inside and he said if you would have run this for a few more days the house would have got short circuited intuitive thinking intuitive thinking is the reason for some of the greatest companies in our world today all of you all know about google how was google formed larry page and surgery brain where doctoral students and they developed an algorithm for web search but every research said that a search engine will fail why because there were two search engines already in the market yahoo search and ask jeeves but something inside surgery brain and larry page told them no we think this google will go ahead and despite research stating despite white hat thinking telling them no this will not work they went ahead and the rest as they say is history google is one of the largest companies in the world all because these two people went and they are students okay they have they are very very scientific guys phds both of them are doctors intuitive thinking and they said let's google it doesn't matter even though yahoo search is there even though ask jeeves is there will go ahead another most amazing story of intuitive thinking is with these two entrepreneurs from two different continents one's name was chalyo yuvidya uh, okay okay and the other's name was dietrich matischitz their names are very funny dietrich matischitz was from austria and chalyo yuvidya was from thailand and in 1987 they had a board meeting they both got together and they said can we replace coca cola as the most drunk beverage in the world uh, very funny coca cola is there for 100 years you can't replace coca cola but they said can we try so they said asked a research agency see this is the type of drink which you are trying to market they gave them a type of drink which they had come out with 
the research agency did a research and said you all are crazy they collected data from thousands of people across europe and across asia and they said this drink will never sell what you all are trying to manufacture it's a useless drink first of all it comes in such a small can second of all it is four times costlier than coca cola small can 250 ml you all are trying to sell for 50 rupees 60 rupees while a 250 ml can of coca cola stands for 15 rupees secondly the taste is disgusting in fact people used to tell are you giving us animal urine to drink this will never succeed in the market if you want to launch a drink launch a drink which is bigger in size than coca cola which is more sweeter and which people like the taste and the cost is a little less but both these entrepreneurs decided let's go with it we will launch this drink which is small which is taste horrible as per research and which is costlier up to 3 times that of coca cola and after 33 years last year this drink sold 750 crore cans you have heard of red bull if you taste it you will come to know red bull sold 750 crore cans they just went by the gut feeling they just went they said doesn't matter if it's smaller doesn't matter if it's costly we are putting caffeine 750 crore cans they overtook the sales of coca cola all because they went by the gut feeling the intuitive thinking are you thinking a little intuitive i'll tell you how to develop this intuitive thinking a little later let's i'm running out of time let's go to the third hat the third and the fourth hat are logical thinking hats okay the third hat is called the black hat which is the logical negative what is it called the logical negative now what is this logical negative hat black hat thinking is when you think of all the negatives which can arise by taking a particular decision sharmila ma'am can you hear me is it clear yes sir yes no problem hmm. no problem sir okay so what happened was this uh, logical negative sometimes and why is it black hat black black you know darkness gloom you think of the negative things in life day night night symbolizes darkness gloom you have the so so that's why the hat was put as a black hat it's called the logical negative now what happens in this logical negative hat is basically you think of all the negative consequences which can arise by taking a particular decision what can go wrong now everybody says you shouldn't think negative you shouldn't think negative but what is argued is that sometimes we have to think negative a little bit at least for our precautionary to get saved to protect ourselves correct or no this is alternative thinking so that we can we can actually prevent ourselves from getting into deep trouble logical negative or black hat thinking is required in a very limited manner okay so for example let's say you want to invest in the stock market what will happen if say your friends tell you investment 5 lakhs you will make 10 lakhs in 2 years and if you invest if you don't think of the negatives the speculation suddenly all economic indicators are pointing horribly even then the market is going up So if you think negative, you are in trouble, isn't it? Because markets are going up because of liquidity. Too much money in the market. That's why the markets are going. But the fundamentals are absolutely rubbish. All the earnings of companies have fallen. There is no cure in sight for the coronavirus. But even then, the markets are going. But you, if you think only stock market, what are the negatives? If I invest speculation, is the market right? so you'll think of all the negatives and you'll come out with an answer no in fact you might have heard in the stock market correct or no there are two more terms which are not very oftenly referred which are called ostriches and pigs who's an ostrich an ostrich is a person who will ignore all the bad news and he'll dig his head into the sand have you seen an ostrich when the storm comes he'll put his head in the sand so if you invest in the stock market now you're an ostrich and these ostriches and there's a pig a pig is a person who's very greedy i've seen a pig it will go and eat everything 
It'll eat rubbish. It'll eat shit. It'll eat everything. So it'll go. It's very greedy. It wants to. They say no greedy pig. So it wants to make money as much as they ignore all the bad news. And there's a famous quotation in the stock market parlance which says, "Bulls and bears survive the stock market, but ostriches and pigs get slaughtered." What? Bulls and bears survive the market, but ostriches and pigs get slaughtered. So sometimes you'll have to think negative. You'll have to think in a neg. What are the negative consequences of taking this decision? If I buy this flat now and real estate prices are falling, wouldn't it be better I wait for some time? So that is negative thinking, but it's okay. Good for negative thinking. In fact, some of the best ads which come out for your social advertisements come out because of negative thinking. Have you seen there was this American anti-smoking agency which came out with an ad which says the negative. What is the negative impact of smoking? Lung cancer, lungs. So they came out with this ad. There was this man. He was smoking, and he was smoking. If you have seen this ad again, describe all this is audio described for me. I can't see. And suddenly there is, he coughs, and one of his lung comes out, correct? And it's filled with that tar, you know, that black color. Then he coughs again. Another one more lung comes out. And now he tries to catch both the lungs. Both his lungs start running, and they say, "Catch your lungs before it is too late." And then they had come out with one more ad. smoking helps you lose weight one lung at a time so these are negative ads it's okay you're talking about something negative but you're thinking of the negative consequences of something so sometimes negative thinking works so logical negative sometimes you have to spend 2 3 minutes on also thinking of what are the adverse circumstances which will go into this the fourth hat it's called the logical positive it's the yellow hat So remember, I've discussed three hats so far. What are the three hats I've discussed? First one was the white hat. Second one was the red hat. What was the third hat? It was the black hat. Now we are talking about the fourth hat, which is called the yellow hat. Now the yellow hat is the logical positive. Why yellow? Because yellow are the bright spots. You see the sun. You no, know? it brings brightness. It brings flavor. it brings everything out right you know so the yellow hat is the logical positive where you think of the positives and this is very very necessary especially nowadays when everybody is only thinking of black hat what will happen corona is there this is there that is there all this is terrible correct you know so you need to think positive in these times at least you have to use your yellow hat correct you know because if you don't use your yellow hat you are in trouble correct you know then you'll get into depression correct or no you'll get into different you can get into depression you have seen an actor having 8 crores in his bank account commit suicide so what what can you say correct or no if you if you have this black hat thinking always then you are in trouble so logical positive thinking is thinking in a way which is where are the good spots what are the yellow spots what are the bright spots in my decision where can i see the positive I don't know if you have heard of this very famous entrepreneur. His name is Richard Branson. Richard Branson is the founder of. Sharmila, ma'am, also tell me if there are any comments which are coming or something like that. If they are getting any yes, clarifications. Sir, viewing. Huh? Yes, if 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 they yes, have sir, anything they want to ask, if they have anything to ask or something like that, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. If I'll they, tell you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We'll do that. We'll do that. Let me finish these hats first. that is the problem sure. correct because when i start talking i don't stop so that's no. <laughs> okay so what's this logical positive this yellow hat is thinking now richard branson is a very very famous entrepreneur from the uk he started the virgin group virgin atlantic and virgin records and he's is an amazing entrepreneur one of the richest men in the world now richard branson when before he started and you know he's dyslexic he's he's of a very very average iq level in fact the normal iq of an individual is 90 to 110 his iq is around 75 76 but even then he is so successful because he always sees the brighter side of life in fact once his accountant asked him sir the gross profit and net profit he said what is gross and what is net and his accountant explained to him 10 times he didn't understand then that accountant got frustrated he said sir you see one c no that is gross 
you put that net no net is less than the c you know so that is net profit is less than gross profit he didn't understand that much also can you believe it and well richard branson was in the uk and he rang up a low cost air carrier in those days there were not budget airlines were not there this was in the 1990s early 1990s and he rang up a budget airline correct it was called some ted air or something like that it was being in in uk there was a airline and when he rang them up in the customer call the queue remember when you call up you have a waiting time for the operator to respond the telephone operator to respond that telephone operator made him wait for something like 20 minutes before she connected the call before he could book a ticket or cancel one ticket when he kept the phone he said there's something positive i thought about this one i must launch an atlantic i must launch a budget airline why the positive is that there is no other budget airline other than this one the second positive is this this airline is extremely inefficient because they're making people wait for 20 minutes that means my airline will do much better and virgin atlantic was launched and it became a successful airline there was one more uh, uh, very famous there was very one more very famous example there was this man who was selling plastic uh, cans and bottles on the road i'm just telling you how you can think positive okay there was a man who was selling plastic uh, bottles on the road and as he was selling it uh, he was shouting out plastic bottles sold here plastic can sold here there were a set of two boys and girls who was playing in the lane nearby they came and they banged against him and the entire plastic cans and bottles which he was holding in his tray fell down there was a big commotion everybody gathered around him and instead of hitting those children instead of getting angry with those children you know what he did he picked up all the plastic bottles he picked up all the plastic cans and he found that none of them was broken so he started putting it on a tray and he said unbreakable plastic bottle sold here unbreakable plastic can sold here so that is logical positive it was not the negative that the cans had fallen but the positive that now how do you develop positive thinking give me a few minutes i'm getting okay so i'll tell you this also so just remember think of the positives think of what can be something positive which can come out of this positive logical positive you need it during this time so that's the yellow hat now let's go to the fifth hat the fifth hat is called the green hat green hat symbolizes creative thinking creative thinking thinking out of the box what is green fertility green shoots coming out of something new fertile brain so when you think in a totally different manner you think in a creative manner you don't think in the ordinary manner it is called green hat thinking what is it called green hat thinking now let me give you an example this is my example when i was young okay again in my fifth standard sixth standard i had this very bad habit of sucking my thumb i used to suck my thumb my mother tried everything she put a bandage on my thumb she put some chili on my thumb she used to put lemon on it and my habit didn't go at all i continued sucking my thumb then she told my father she told you know this say you no know, aji sunte ho kuch karo iske liye do something for this boy he is ridiculous he keeps sucking his thumb is fifth standard sixth standard now he's gone to sixth standard we had a holidays between a fifth and sixth standard he's gone to sixth standard and being such a big boy he's 13 years old and he's sixth or 12th or 13 years old and still he's sucking his thumb my father told don't worry i will solve this problem that same evening my father bought some eight new dresses for me shirts and pants four uniform shirts and pants and four shirts and pants which i can wear in the house when i'm going to play in my apartments etc my mother was very angry she said you're crazy i told you have to punish this boy and instead of punishing this boy you have bought him new dresses eight new dresses you're stupid he told no don't worry wear him these shirts and pants he'll become okay the next day i wore my shirt was okay but to my utter horror my pant were two sizes bigger so whole day because in my apartment there were girls also and you know six times seven times you're going and meeting all these young girls boys i kept on pulling my other the pant used to go down i used to keep pulling my pant up 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 and i forgot to cut suck my thumb now also if i go to class i'll be pulling my pant up so 
what happens is within a matter of two months because of the creative thinking of my dad my habit of sucking my thumb was removed that is called green hat thinking are you thinking out of the box are you thinking in the same way as everybody is thinking or are you thinking a little different than what other people are thinking that is called as green hat thinking creative thinking is very very important in today's there was a multi story building of 25 floors this happened in the usa 25 floors and the office timings, it was an office building and office timings, they had only two lifts. There was a construction mistake, only two lifts were kept and in the morning rush time, nine o'clock, everybody comes to work. The waiting queue for the lift used to be at least 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And all these employees got frustrated. They started requisitioning to their employee. What is this nonsense? We have to wait for a lift for 15, 20 minutes. So there was people who started giving ideas. How can we make this, solve this problem? These people have to wait for 15, 20 minutes. Everybody can't change their office timings for us. There are 20 floors, 25 floors of offices. So one person said, why don't we put a capsule lift? You know, capsule lift, the lift which is outside the building, which will go up. That costs crores of rupees. Okay, why don't we put an escalator? Help we'll put this, you know, the escalator which you see in these uh, uh, which you see in these airports, correct? You know, that also costs a lot and you have to disrupt the entire functioning. Now, there was one creative guy. He said the matter is not work waiting for 10 or 15 minutes, but the matter is what do they do for 10, 15 minutes that is causing all of them to get angry. So, you know what they did in the ground floor? They put huge mirrors with lighting, with different shades for the women. So that they can, when they come, they can look at themselves, smile, look at the mirror, put their bindi, put their thing. And for the men, they put some small video game, free slots. You can play over there. They put weighing machines. It costed them a total of 1 lakh or 2 lakh rupees. Most of them now started looking at the mirror, taking their weight free, going and playing, started going without any load at all. The problem was thinking in a different manner. So that is called as green hat thinking. So remember, five hats I've discussed because the sixth hat is a little different. Okay. The first hat was white hat, facts, facts, research. We trust in God, but believe in data. Second hat was red hat, intuitive thinking, thinking from your gut feeling. Third hat was logical negative, black hat thinking. Fourth hat was yellow hat thinking logical positive fifth hat is green hat thinking creativity sixth hat is blue hat now what's the blue blue is the sky the overview of all these five hats are you using these five hats properly or not it's evaluative thinking it's thinking about thinking it's just like the sky is blue it covers everything no we are all under the sky so thinking whether you're using too much of black hat are we, am I using a little bit of my red hat? Am I using a little bit of my green hat thinking? Am I trying? So thinking that because we get into this trap of only one side thinking. We think of only black hats most of the time negative. We think of only green hat. We only think of new ideas. So Debono said that why don't we have a hat which will think about whether we are thinking in a proper manner or not. So the evaluative thinking hat the blue hat, which covers all the other hats to see whether you're using the other hats correctly or not is called as blue hat thinking. What is it called as blue hat thinking? So just remember this. These are the six hats. I'm not going to give you an example. So you can set these six hats. Set a time when I'm thinking about a decision, whether I have to buy a new flat, whether I have to take this class, whether I have to take up a yoga class, whether I have to do something, whether I have to take up anything, six hats, just to all the hats. Have I done my yellow hat thinking? Have I seen the positives? Have I done my black hat thinking? Have I seen the negative? Have I done research? Have I collected facts on the matter before buying this flat? 
Have I done my green hat? Is there any creative thing where I can buy the hat at a cheaper price from somewhere else? Have I done my intuition? What is my gut feeling telling? Is it good to go with this or not to go 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 with this? So that is the way in which you use these six thinking hats to think in a diverse manner. Try and think in a totally different manner. This is what is called as these six thinking hats. Now, how do you build up these six thinking hats? Especially there are two or three hats which are very, very important, which we lack in. One is intuitive, the red hat thinking, which is very important. The second is the yellow hat thinking, which is not thought of so much. And the third is the green hat thinking, which we don't use. We tend to overuse two hats. We tend to use the white hat only positive, negative risk. Search. Correct or no? Yellow hat thinking has shrunk. Green hat thinking has shrunk. Red hat thinking doing that. Now comes to the question. Sharmila ma'am, how much time do you have? What's the time now? It is, uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Four ten. Yes, sir. What's the time, ma'am? Okay. Four ten, sir. I'll just uh, okay, okay, uh, I, okay. Just five minutes. I'll just give you five minutes later. There has been a lot of research. Okay. Now, all these six hats I've told you, you can use. You Hello, sir. Hello. Ask me a question. How do you develop this intuitive, especially? Can you hear me, ma'am? Sir. sir, your voice is breaking. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me, ma'am? Okay? Yes, sir. Not yes. it okay? Yeah, Just sir. hold on. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay? Yeah, Should sir. I go ahead or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Please go ahead. Hello? Yeah, because there is a little... Hello, sir. I'm getting a little worried. Anytime, the sir, we'll quickly wind this. Yes, ma'am. Again, you got strapped. Yes. Hello. Tell me. No, sir, your voice is not audible. My voice is still Hello. breaking. Just hold on, ma'am. Just one minute. Can you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes. Am I audible now, ma'am? Yes, sir. I yes. Remove the plug and put it back. Okay. Develop this red hat and green hat thinking. Okay. And there is one method which is works brilliantly. Okay. Now I'm very scared of telling you this method because people generally really don't like this method and they don't like me when I talk about this method, but I'll still tell it. See, now what happens is you overuse your five senses on a daily basis. You overuse your seeing. You see hundreds of colors, especially you're seeing hundreds of screens. You overuse your taste. You'll be tasting everything, especially you're at home. You wanted to eat everything. You over your listening. You're listening to so many webinars. You're smelling a lot. Correct or no? Now, what experts have suggested is that to develop your intuitive and creative thinking, something which works brilliantly. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about science. Then I'll now, remember your brain has two parts, your left side of your brain and your right side of your brain. Your left brain is... Hello, sir. Speaks completely from the beginning all your accounts, statistics, maths, and yes. Ma'am, can you hear me Sir, or no? you're not audible. Is the voice low or something, ma'am? One minute, just hold Sir, on. Sir, you're not, you're not audible. And Sir, can you yes, hear me ma now? You can, uh, you, could you please stop your video then? We, it might be audible. Can you hear me now, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay, let's see. We'll try this five minutes, correct? Or no? So now you have two sides of your brain. 
can you hear me you keep telling me after each then yes 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 then i'll come to know okay am i audible yes, now sir, yes yes there are two sir, yes. parts of your brain the left side and the right side the left side of your brain is the logical brain which gets exercised continuously the right side of your brain is the creative brain the intuitive brain which doesn't get exercised correct and if there is good neural connections between your right side and the left side So you got stuck. As well as your back. Uh, now is it okay? Just hold on, ma'am. Just hold on. I'll just call my son and we'll see what can be done. Is it audible now? No. If you if you uh, if you mute your video. Okay, I'll call my son. I don't know how to do it. I'll just ask my son to mute my video and I'll tell him. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on one Now minute. Now it is man. okay. You Pratyush? can go ahead, sir. Pratyush, Pratyush, come here. She is telling that the word audio is breaking big time. I remove this, uh, this voice two three times, but in then just switch off my video. No, are you using that PUBG? Just stop using I it. Stop. Ask Ishan. Two forty. Stop. Okay, now just put Alt V. Just remove my video. Alt what? Just put our video off. Just a second. Yeah, I'm not getting the hmm? Do all three. Uh, just one minute. Just wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah ma'am. I've switched off my video. Is it okay now? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Please. Am I clear? Yeah, sir. Please go ahead. Okay. Now coming to the point. So how do you develop the neural connections from the left side of your brain to the right side of your brain? Now, the most scientific method of developing neural connections from the left side of your brain to the right side of your brain is sitting in silence for at least 15 to 20 minutes every day. Okay, sit in silence. Because if I use the word meditation, you all will kick me. But it's okay, I'll use the word. Meditate for at least 15, 20 minutes every day. Sit in silence. It doesn't matter what happens. Don't think of anything. Because the University of Leeds has shown that your creativity, your spontaneity, and your peace of mind increases by sitting in silence. Meditation has been researched all over the world, and it can make a huge difference to your life by shouting. If I tell it to teachers also, they start shouting, but you can't deny research. And in fact, you can't deny white hat thinking also for this. Research has shown continuously that sitting, just do this. And I promise you, you'll see magical results in your life. And I can vouch from my own personal experience. Now, how many years since I started meditating? Mm, around now, around eight years, seven to eight years. And my life has changed completely. So you'll see become more logical. You want thing. I, 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 I think so. For the first two years, I slept with it. Now what? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Now okay. Okay. So soon you'll start getting the hold of it. Now what is this meditation? Six thing. Meditation is concentration on one thing and then from one thing you go to nothing so if you see all the great meditation practices whether it's vipassana they'll make you you have multiple screens going on in your brain you're thinking about your house you're thinking about your family you're thinking about your career you're thinking about your financial resources so let's say you have five or three let's say you have 20 screens going on in your brain meditation will tell you from 20 screens come to one screen think of your breath or do Japam, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Or if you think of, uh, Christians will tell you, do the rosary beads. Islam will tell you, do the seal. Or concentrate on your heart. From multiple screens, you come, and you come to one screen, either on your breath or on your Japam or whatever. From one screen, you go to no screen. From one screen, you won't know. Suddenly, you'll slip into silence. Now, download any app of meditation. Try it. I'm not telling you. It's not 
just try it just try it you will see matrix of eight and all that correct or no isn't it in fact once they ask the line up Sir? Yes, ma'am. What can? Your voice is breaking. Can we wind up the session, ma'am? Then, ma'am. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Shall we start uh, having a few questions, sir? Shall we discuss a few questions? Okay, you just start. Are you it. able to, or uh, do you have? Yes, yeah. So just that. Okay. Let's have a few questions. Yes. Sir. Tell them Isaac Newton. He gave his calculus when he sat in silence for three months. Albert Einstein used to sit in silence, sacred. Also, these are famous scientists. You to improve your thinking, get that sort of okay. Thank you, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you all. We'll just have the few questions. Ask me, and then we'll wind up. That's all. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your wonderful and mind blowing session, sir. Your talent is God's gift to you. We'll have few questions, then we'll wind up, sir. How to reduce yeah. negative mm. thinking related to COVID nineteen? Sir, how to reduce audible? negative thinking with respect to COVID? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah, ma'am. How to reduce negative? Am I audible? That's the question, ma'am. Your audible. Yes, My voice is breaking. Yes. Am I audible now, ma'am? Yeah, sir. You are audible. Now you have to understand one thing. covid 19 the population of this world is 780 crores okay i don't know how many people have got covid but not more than 5% of the population what's the latest i think so it's 8 million or something like that right 80 lakhs or something like that so 95% of us will not be touched by Hello. The only people who have to worry are those two. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Now we can able to hear you. Please. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay. I'll go slowly. The only people who have to worry are those above us. Sir, sorry, we can't hear you anything. Hello, sir. Hello. So we couldn't. Can hear you hear me, ma'am? So, hello. Now, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yeah, but your voice is breaking, sir. I don't know why it's happening. My voice is. Is it okay now, ma'am? Yeah, now. Should okay, I sir. continue? Should I continue? I don't know what is. I think so. The rain outside has caused the uh, internet to be a little shaky. Are you okay now, ma'am? Yes. Can sir. I continue? Yes, sir. So one thing is that it nine point zero one percent of the world's population will be affected. And it's not not going to be you. Be sure about that. Second thing is, you can just understand that span. 
kind of a human being is approximately 85 to 90 years in depth. 19 to 52, 100 weeks. If eight weeks, 10 weeks of your life are gone, you have not done anything. Sorry, we are not able to hear you. In out of 10 divided by 4,700. One minute, I'll try once more, ma'am. I don't know. Should I log out again and log in or something like that, ma'am? No, no, not required. Actually, your bandwidth is low. Is it showing that? Actually, it was. Is it yeah. showing that my bandwidth is low? Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, God. But I've got a broadband connection. I yeah, don't know now, why is it showing. One minute, I have to... Now uh, hmm? we can able to hear you. Okay. So out of this 4,700 weeks of your life, if 10 weeks of your life go up and down, it's not going to make much of a difference. So just don't think negative. One, understand that you are not... Don't have that extreme negative that out of the 99.99% of the people who are free, you are one of them. Only 0.01% of the population will get affected. Second is, remove the negative thinking that there is going to be a life has come to an end because only 10 weeks out of 4,700 weeks of your life have gone. Third thing, don't keep looking at the media again and again. You shoot 25 people got, 100 people got, 50,000 people got. You are not the health ministry. The more you keep one thinking about something, the more probability it will happen in your life. So just cut off that media portion where you're looking at that COVID figures every day. It doesn't mean don't take precaution. Please, you'll say don't take precaution. You have to wash your hands. But there are some things which you have to understand is there is something called as a circle of influence and circle of concern. Circle of influence is what you can do. What can you do? Take precautions, wear a mask, don't go out unnecessarily. Circle of concern is I'll get 100 people are dying in the world. 2,000 people have lost their jobs. That you can't do anything. So just concentrate on your circle of influence rather than concentrating on your circle of That's what I want. Okay. Is it okay, ma'am? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I can even. Now, can we cancel? Can we conclude? I think so. There's a lot of yes, sir. Uh, so sad. Yeah, a lot of disturbances are there. Uh, we'll conclude it, sir. We'll conclude it. Conclude. Yes, yeah, sure. If they have any questions, let them send it to you or the organizers. We'll try and answer them by email or something like that. Okay. Sure, sir. Yeah. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, I'll just proceed with the watch of thanks. Few minutes. Done. Yeah. No duty is more no. urgent than that of returning thanks. Saying thank you is more than good manners. It is good spirituality too. I, on behalf of School of Commerce Studies, deemed to be university, Knowledge Campus, Bangalore, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all for grazing your important work and sharing with us your findings and opinions today. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Chandra, Chand, Chandra Sir, President of uh, JGI, Dr. Shundararajan Sir, Vice Chancellor of JGI, Dr. Ishwaran Ayer Sir, Dean School of Commerce, Director in Industry Interface and Key Projects who have given us the opportunity to organize such a wonderful national level webinar. Also, I would like to thank Dr. B.A. Vasu sir, the director, School of Commerce, HODs, coordinators, organizers, who are the backbone for this webinar. I would like to thank our distinguished resource person, Dr. Rajdeep Manwani sir, for making an excellent presentation and making this webinar interesting and meaningful. We are also grateful to thank the participants for making this webinar a grand success. I'd like to thank Mr. Nikhil, Assistant Professor, School of Commerce Studies for his technical support. Also, I would like to thank our staff members for their kind coordination. 
once again thank you one and all dear participants kindly fill the feedback form by end of the day and the certificates will be issued within 10 days through your mail thank you one and all thanks for making this uh, webinar in a grand success thank you thank you Pratyush, the exit, they're saying bandwidth was very low. No, no.